Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tokyo, the Sumida River in the center of the city. I'm at one of the points that I like to come to where the rivers kind of branch off this way going towards Toyosu. If you look over this way, you can see the Tokyo Sky Tree, just the tower just above those apartment buildings. And the water is very, very muddy. It's easier to see in the sunlight over there. We're going to go take a little tour around this area. Um, last night, and I can give you my account on, on what happened during the middle of the night, but you can already see we've got incredible blue skies in Tokyo. This is what it always looks like after typhoon in Japan. You have awful, awful conditions, and then the next day, it is the most beautiful day. Everything has cleared out of the atmosphere, um, but I'm taking a somber tone. I would be rejoicing because we've been cooped up uh, for the entire day yesterday. Uh, because we just didn't go outside except to try to find some food when we did another live stream before but uh, the, a lot of the country right now is hurting very badly because of flooding and you can see that the city of tokyo is not bad at all people are out they've been again cooped up in their house all day kids are playing families are enjoying the sunshine and this is a, a day after a typhoon in tokyo it wasn't always like this though I think it was 1959 that Typhoon Vera or Isewan. We, we, we don't give names in, of typhoons in Japan, but Isewan um, in 1959 was the deadliest typhoon. 5,000 dead, uh, 15,000 injured, 1.5 million homeless. So this one doesn't compare. We had the death toll is five there's maybe 150 people missing. So it's not nearly as bad as it used to be because Japan is just very well prepared for this. But if you look on, and if you, if you do want to get more information, I highly, highly recommend going on to NHK World. There's a free app that you can download. They have it in English. Um, the government of Tokyo has uh, disaster information in 13 languages. So there's, it, I, I just noticed over the last couple of years how, much, how well prepared Japan has been for foreign tourists that are visiting Japan in cases of emergencies, of disasters like this. Uh, very, very little loss of life. Nobody in the city of Tokyo. The closest was in, in Gunma where uh, I think, was it one or three people were washed away and they're still looking for them. The flooding in the countryside is awful. We were seeing the images in, on NHK this morning, especially in Nagano. All of the rivers have not been able to handle the water as well as it has here in Tokyo, where the drainage is incredible. All of the runoff from the, from the city. Again, you have like runners here enjoying the late morning sunshine. It's about 12 o'clock lunchtime now on a Sunday. But we have flooding. There's places in Nagano where people are sitting on their roofs. They can't get away. So we're gonna cross here the bridge. This is a point I came to because I think it's, you'd be able to get an idea. Tokyo is, um, the city of Tokyo is very much like Amsterdam in a way. Tons and tons of canals. And the reason why is because during the Edo period, they would use these canals for transport. This is Shinkawa, New Island here, and we're right here on the tip. This is where I like to come from time to time. They're running because they've been cooped up all day yesterday, and they want to get out and enjoy Sunday because this is, would be a holiday. Flights are still, according to the latest reports, flights will be coming back soon. So the best thing to do is to check the Narita and Haneda website. Some of the flights are still canceled. There is still some, some wind here. So you might want to check out some of the flights of people that are stranded. We're stranded. <laughs> there was a lot of people stranded here yesterday. Um, of the, of the 10, 10 or so people that I talked to, like 80% of them were quite happy to be stranded because they could spend another couple of days in Japan. Uh, 
<laughs> it wasn't anything. Alex is still here, so I might be able to catch up with Alex later today and get his impressions on the typhoon, Typhoon Hagibis. It was a super typhoon. I'm gonna give you breakdown. I'm just gonna get here to the center of the bridge, but I'm gonna break down the, uh, uh, what happened last night? What did we feel? What did it, what was it like in central Tokyo? There's a Tokyo sky tree again. Crystal clear skies right now. So last night around, around, uh, 8 PM, it started to really pick up. Uh, you can hear the wind whistling all around the apartment that we live in. We're on the sixth floor. Uh, a lot of my friends on the first floor of apartments were asked to evacuate even before the typhoon hit, which is very unusual for Japan. But again, Japan will always lean on the side of safety to an, ex to an extreme because any loss of life is not tolerable. It should be in any every country, of course, but it's not tolerable in Japan. We just, we do not want to see anybody lose their life. And police have boards in front of the safety first. Exactly. We're seeing some of the Ronald Road in there. We see uh, sign boards in front of police, police boxes called Koban saying that the, the injuries and the deaths that have occurred in that month. And they keep track of that the, for the public to know that we are safe. That's where we started the live stream right here. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the experience. Here we go. So it was about 8 p.m. And you can see the muddy water. This is all coming from upstream, upriver. A lot of it dumping into the Sumida River here and the Arakawa and the Edogawa, which have both flooded over. Um, but you can see it's not too bad here. I was most worried about this side because this is where I normally go running. And uh, the path goes all the way up to Askusa and, uh, and beyond. And it looks like it's clear for today. Some of the underpasses underneath the bridges are probably flooded, but we were well prepared, well prepared. Last night around 8 p.m., the wind was going on all day, but it was about 8 p.m. that the, it really, really was crazy. A little bit before that, there was, the, the building was just starting to shake. <laughs> the building was shaking. And I thought it was the wind. I said, wow, that's a massive gust of wind shaking the building. It was an earthquake. There was a, there was a um, I think it was magnitude four or five off of the coast of Chiba that shook Tokyo. Um, Shindo three or Shindo four, which is not a small earthquake in any means. It, it's, a, it's a small earthquake, but it's an earthquake nonetheless. And we, our house shook and we found out, oh, that's an earthquake. That wasn't the wind. I wasn't any more relieved by that. <laughs> it was just kind of one of these days where Mother Nature never gives Japan a break. Typhoon and earthquake yesterday, yes. Especially in, in Chiba Prefecture, which got rocked the hardest from the earthquake. There's no, no deaths from it, no tsunamis from it. It wasn't that big of an earthquake. But just remind you that you, you are at the elements of nature when you do come to Japan. It, and being a tourist does not make you exempt. You should know or have an idea. That's why I think some of these live streams are important. You should know or have an idea of what you're getting into when you decide to book a trip to Japan. Yes, it is the safest country in the world. It is the safest country in the world. Except there are natural disasters that occur. Earthquakes, typhoons, landslides. We are not um, invulnerable to them. We, we have problems with these our locals locals who have been here for years like me myself no yet today is fine for those who are joining in right now we have beautiful blue skies this is the typical day after the typhoon but a lot of people in the countryside uh, away from the city are, are hurting and the typhoon has now left japan going back over to the pacific really did do a lot of damage over the middle of the night there are people stranded on top of their houses rivers have overflowed um, we've seen images from nagano prefecture where uh, a river up there has overflown, flooded a town, and, and residents are on the top of the roof looking for any salvation. Um, and I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes, but uh, between 9 and 12, there was a lot of wind. And then I guess it was around 11 or the end of 12, it just got quiet. And I thought we were in the eye of the storm. I thought we were in the eye of the storm. 
And I asked Kanai to come out here and talk to us too, but she, she's still tired and, and she doesn't want to come out. The typhoon was pretty much over after the eye had crossed. We didn't get any backwind really. And uh, I don't know. I thought it would be I thought it would be worse here in the city. I thought that it was a super typhoon and it would be worse. We didn't really feel the effects. I'm sure we're, we were fortunate ones, um, but I slept really fine and didn't have any wind noises. We, we even had the window open <laughs> to let in some air. Um, so that was, that was good, but we, we were very much panicked that day that we didn't have enough food, and this is rightfully so. Uh, you should always, again, lean on being cautious. What's gonna happen after? Now, 10 minutes in the live stream, this is extremely important. What happens after the typhoon? It looks like we have a beautiful day, it's past, but the aftermath of, of Typhoon uh, Hagibis is gonna be la living, living with us for the next week, at least. Because the countryside and much of the rivers have flooded, a lot of the farms are along that area. We're going to lose tons of vegetables, tons of produce that, that come to the market here and the prices are gonna skyrocket. So one of the other things that is also, one of the other things that we don't think about after this typhoon, and a lot of people are now just enjoying it, but I know from having traveled a lot, is the roads are also, the bridges, the roads, the infrastructure also has, um, needs to be checked over and cleaned. So there's gonna be trouble getting things into the market. So prices are gonna rise because of that. Supply is gonna be low for the next five days. I think it'll be replenished. We saw this last after the great, great uh, Tohoku earthquake in 2011, March 11, 2011. Um, there was the earthquake and then there was the aftermath where shops uh, were empty with rice and, and cup noodles and things that you needed, bread, eggs for a couple of weeks, it was very hard to get your hands on any supplies, not just because the shops were out of it, but because they couldn't replenish um, the stores fast enough or get, get it to the city of Tokyo. So even the tourists here didn't have, would go out to eat and wouldn't have all of the choices or any. There's some scout boats now on the river by the city of Tokyo going around looking and, and scouting the damage. I've seen it. Yeah, this is the first non-city boat that I've seen on the river. I haven't seen space boat for those who love the space boat, which is the Suijo bus of Tokyo. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure if they can if they can confirm the safety of the stadiums, the Rugby World Cup will continue. Again, Kanai and I, we didn't we we had really strong winds leading up to. Um, 9 p.m., which was supposed to be when the center of the storm hit, there was an eerie, eerie silence. Just everything went quiet. And then this, the winds never really picked up again. It's going on to about 11, midnight. There were some winds, but nothing like what we had expected in the city of Tokyo. The typhoon went pretty much right over us. It could be in the area that we're living in or the buildings surrounding us, but we heard a really strong winds going all around us. The windows shaking. It was a typical, like, a hurricane force thing, 100 miles per hour winds, which is very, very strong for the Pacific. We have weaker typhoons in, um, with, typhoons are weaker than hurricanes because the Pacific Ocean is cooler than the, than the Atlantic. The Atlantic is, has much more violent storms because of the warmer waters there. Um, and there's probably other, other reasons because of that. Raf, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, this is also an update to my family. We're safe. And then we woke up this morning to sunshine. I woke. I remember opening up the blinds at 8 a.m. about three hours ago, and I was just um, very, very shocked at the stark difference. But uh, in what three, four hours can do. Again, people are out and about now. There is some wind, but just a little leftover. Five people are reported to have died last night. 15 are missing. We're always worried about the elderly, those who don't get the information or don't have family to tell them that a typhoon is coming. They go outside and then they get lost. Those are typical situations that happen. <laughs> Japan's one of the oldest countries in the world. We have a, a very large um, senior citizen population. 
I'm just shocked right now that the Sumida River did not overflow beyond one, two meters. What made this storm extremely dangerous or worrying was the fact that we had a full moon last night and the tide was up. And this is the worst, I, I guess you would call this the perfect storm. I think Nasha Broad called this the perfect storm when we talked on the Discord server uh, a couple of, a couple, not too long ago, maybe about six, eight hours ago. And it pretty much was. And that was the biggest worry because of the full moon and because of the high tide. This was going to be a really tough situation. And, uh, the central Tokyo is fine. Again, we have the best, we have the best drainage in maybe the world because we're set up for this kind of thing. Walkways are now, I think there might've been water here, but it, it's recited and now the tide has gone down. We started the live stream over there at that point where the river divides. Everything is still standing. Everything is good. No volcanoes erupted. But we still have some problems in the countryside and uh, we'll be feeling the effects for a couple of weeks. Um, the biggest typhoon to hit Japan that caused the greatest damage uh, was in 1959, Typhoon Vera. Vera, they called it, but it's, we call it um, Isewan. Ise, Ise Japan typically does not name the typhoons. They'll give them numbers. This was typhoon number 19 in Japan, not typhoon Hagibis. Nobody calls it Hagibis. That's a Western thing. We, go, we just give them numbers and we try to forget them. So typhoon number 19 um, is still flooding the rivers. The Sumida River here is really brown. It's just from the runoff from up, up river in the countryside. It's flooded uh, plains and brought the, resi the uh, sediment with it. I don't know, so people have been asking me why I, why it's called Hagibis. I don't know how they come up with the names and I don't think it's a good thing to name typhoons. I always think that the Japanese system is better because it not only destroys a person's name, I can't think of the name Andrew and not remember Florida now. But you don't want to person, I humanize a storm. I don't think humanizing a storm is a good thing. I think a storm should be forgotten, we should move on from it. We should remember the people that we lost in it, not the name of the storm itself. But in Japan, uh, and Hagibis is a Filipino name it's from the Philippines, I believe. And they have their share of typhoons. And I'm sure that poor Hagibis, those little kids named Hagibis in the Philippines are not doing, are not doing, not happy about it. Maybe they are right now, but as long as the storm doesn't do some massive damage. Again, Japan, nobody in Japan knows the name Hagibis in, in this country. Raf writes in, if I got a chance to see the purple skies. I did not wake up that early. Um, those who woke up at like five in the morning, 5.30, five, I guess it's about 5.15 now, the sunrise were, had a beautiful sunrise too. And I think you'll see them on Instagram. Because we were, we, we'd been up on the train the last night, we got a really nice uh, night of sleep. We woke up pretty, pretty good. So I didn't get the, I didn't wake up for the sunrise today. But again, it is a beautiful day here. If you were stranded in Tokyo, because of the typhoon, your reward is for being a survivor. You can call yourself that now, and uh, you have these beautiful blue skies. Kanai was a little bit scared. The sound of the... We had some lightning and thunder when the storm went through here. You could hear it rumbling, but the sound of the wind does not make you feel safe. Nor did that earthquake at around 6 or 7 p.m. that accompanied the typhoon as it was coming in closer and closer. We just didn't know. PVG is fine. Um, a tree did fall in his neighborhood, but that's all that has happened. It's a beautiful bridge here. This crosses into Tsukuda, which is an um, a original little island in, in Edo, Tokyo, where the fishermen would catch the fish and deliver that to the shogun. They all lived on Tsukuda Island. They're from Osaka, those fishermen, and the island still stands. This is all the original island. That's why they have the skyscrapers. And uh, this is all new land over on the other side. So the skyscrapers came in just in the last 10, 10, 15 years. Hey, your eyes here. Good to know you're doing okay, John. Any recommendations? I'll be arriving next week. Just wondering if there's anything, uh, something else I should be aware of on the typhoon's aftermath. 
I don't think so. If your hotel is here in Tokyo, you're probably going to be fine. Um, the hotels, uh, again, there's just not a, not a lot of damage. If anything, even the scaffolding on the buildings is still intact. I can give you a quick look here. They're doing some repairs on that building over there, and nothing has seems to have flown away or any no damage on it. Yeah, the only thing that you should be aware of is that it is still typhoon season, and although. If you're coming to Japan in two, three weeks, we just don't know what storms are, are, are brewing. So you might want to check the weather report. Anytime you come between September, um, I should say, between July and November, you should check the weather report for typhoons. There's not much you can do to prepare for it before you arrive here. But if you are here staying, just be patient, take things slowly, look for information. Don't go outside when the winds do come. Follow the guidance of your hotel manager and staff. Ask them questions and uh, ask your neighbors questions. And make sure you'll be able to tell the vibe of the city and the people around you, but you wanna buy maybe a couple of bottles of water just in case, because we don't know what's going to happen um, in these kinds of situations and uh, have some cup of noodle, cup ramen, maybe some sandwiches or something for the next couple of days. You wanna make sure that you have food, um, either for yourself or to give to other people. And those are just some of the things that you can do w when a typhoon is coming your way, but you can't really prepare for it um, in, if, you're coming from a, if you're coming here to travel. It just will hit you, right? Uh, the Japan JMA, is the Japan Meteorological Meteorological Agency and they are the weather reporting agency here in Japan and their website also has a lot of satellites and up-to-date information. I'm sure the Weather Channel and the other sites are pretty good too. This is the Sumida River right now, John, that's right. So some great questions coming in here. Wind is blowing hard on your mic. Yeah, there's, a, there's winds coming all around. I'm trying to, to to go into the wind so it doesn't affect too much. Hagibis, the name of the typhoon means fast and it came and went pretty fast. Winds are 100 miles per hour. Nothing to, to freak out about but I think typhoons and earthquakes and, and these natural disasters just sort of happen. They just sort of happen. Vicky from Yakima I said, get a snack. All right, you got it. This is from uh, Darlin Nikki 67 Thank you so much. Yeah, this, uh, you, you cannot... You, the typhoon season should not be an excuse not to come because September and o October look like this, okay? It looks like this. Beautiful skies, right? There's a chance of a typhoon, but they come and go so fast. And Japan is so prepared for it. You should not worry about it. It's just something that you will live through. I think Nasha Broad, one of our moderators, said he's been through two of them when visiting Japan. <clears throat> so, um, you're not, the loss of life and injuries is very, very low unless you're, you know, walking around outside. You're not, you don't have anything to worry about. Um, the United States in, uh, in 1959 really loaned a lot of help to Japan after Typhoon Vera, or what we say in Japan, Isewan, and that partnership still goes on today and I'm sure the U.S. will offer help to Japan for the stranded people that are on top of the roof. Right now the Japan Self-Defense Force and the local agencies are, are up and running right now to get people that are stranded on the roofs in Nagano and other areas around Japan so that they're safe and uh, um, these little things are big things. They're probably little things in the international news, but they're big things here in Japan and we're, and the country is, is well prepared to take care of them. Some really good questions here. If you have anything that you want to ask, by all means, um, you can leave it, leave a comment here or in the uh, comment section after this in the playback. I, I really hope that these videos have some kind of value for people that watch these back. Um, also, if you if you <laughs> hit the like button, I do appreciate that too. Yeah, you have to sometimes tell people. Um, I want to I want to ask more people about their experiences, and I think for the main channel, this might be a pretty good um, video to produce. And before a storm, 
have a really well-made video documenting what you can do when a typhoon hits, um, how you can be prepared, and what you can do from home, which is basically not that much, but what you can do to be prepared before you make a trip to Japan and the times that typhoons are strongest here. There, there was a lot of damage. We really don't know the morning after, but the reports are from the news that a, a lot of the rivers outside of Tokyo have flooded over. Um, we received very quickly a large amount of rain, some places up to one meter of rain in like one or two hours time. And that's just too much for any drainage to handle. Tokyo was fine. We had places in the city of Tokyo that received a lot of rain really quickly too, more than in other places because of the bands of rain affected each neighborhood in Tokyo differently as well. <clears throat> so there's no consistency in the storm like this, but our experience was that it came and went really fast. And uh, this, the name Hagibis means speed. That's a good thing except for the speeds of the winds, which are 100 miles per hour, which was a record, I believe. But the buildings in Japan are very, very... The Hakone received, we're getting reports here from Keith Hakone received 100 millimeters of rain, which is a meter. That's, uh, that's crazy. I'll, that's a crazy amount of rain in a short amount of time. Um, in some countries, that's like a year's worth in an hour, right? So uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna be fine here in Japan, but just it's gonna take a, a few. It's gonna take a couple of weeks before we we know the total extent of the damage. Those of those who are riding the Shinkansen should be pretty patient. I think it's the Shinkansen should be up and running. But after a storm, JR will usually check every inch of the Shinkansen track to make sure that there is no damage, that there's no possibility of a derailing, nothing's on the tracks, everything, the integrity of the electrical lines above is, is good. JR is, is safety first. Um, so just be patient if you're waiting for the Shinkansen to start up again. I know that they were canceled yesterday um, from a certain time. Only and. Only, only certain routes on the line were running between Osaka and Nagoya and places that were not heavily, uh, did not have as much heavy winds as Tokyo did. Yeah. Chuida Sora Alba in two. Not sure what that means. Oh, and uh, I'm trying to think of the stuff that happened over the last couple of days here. Our flight was canceled two days, or a day before the typhoon hit, which was see if I can get out of the wind noise, which which is why we had to jump on the, the last Shinkansen on Friday, and that was pretty crazy for us. The to Tokyo Disneyland was closed yesterday. It was the first time, the second time in its history since daily operations began, and the first time since the Great Tohoku Earthquake in 2011 that they closed the park, um, which is pretty incredible. That's that's how much, how, how much precaution Japan took. They closed Tokyo Disneyland on a weekend. And Tokyo Disneyland is probably not happy about that <laughs> on a weekend. That's a significant amount of revenue loss for that company. Uh, the Oriental Land Company is who owns Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. But uh, safety first again, if anyone had lost their life, that would be worse thing for their reputation. They were not prepared enough. That's what that means. So it's a big black mark on any, any city, any area that has a loss of life. So you have to be very careful on that Tokyo Disneyland was closed. They, they should be operating from 2 p.m. today, I think. Um, I think that's what uh, Solaire's, who's one of our Discord servers who does uh, Tokyo Disney, one of the Tokyo Disney's uh, websites, um, told me yesterday. So all this, life should be getting back to business. Life should be getting back to normal. Be a little bit patient. Safety first as businesses and transportation, everything checks. I haven't seen too many buses go by. Um, so bus services might be not running at full capacity right now. It is Sunday. So just take it easy. Just relax a little bit. Maybe you have to change your plans a little bit, but don't, you know, we're still alive. And a hundred years ago, this storm would have killed uh, tens of thousands here in Japan. But today we're so prepared for it, only five. And I say only, but that's if you compare it to a hundred years ago. But um, that's a significant drop from a hundred years ago. So 
we we could say that we're quite we're quite lucky and quite blessed. That's the other side. That's where um, Skiji Market used to be, and Kachidoki Bridge in the distance, and we have beautiful blue skies today. There were a lot of shelters. There were questions on the homeless. Japan has a disaster, a yellow disaster book, that has all of the plans laid out and police officers and local um, leaders know where homeless hang out and they bring them into shelters if they can. I don't think anybody would decline that. So everybody was safe. I haven't had any reports, of, heard any reports on any of the media here in Japan of any deaths in Japan. It is very, very quiet on the river though. If you noticed, it's very rare to have no boats. We've had only two boats go by this whole live stream. There's every indication that after 2 p.m. today that most of, most of the businesses in Japan will continue. I got one more story I gotta tell you. This is the story that really impacted me yesterday. Um, walk up here a little bit the story uh, it's it's only like a 30 second story but it, it really impacted me uh, and I told Kanai this too and, and she she just shook her head this is Japan so yesterday when I did that live stream and just right here on the corner we didn't have any food in our refrigerator we were quite worried um, we had you know a couple bottles of water from the train trip we didn't have, we had, I think we had one instant ramen and our refrigerator had died the day before. So we had to unplug it and, and throw everything away. So we had to start from scratch. It was the worst timing possible for that to happen. The supermarkets were all closed. They were closed yesterday because of the oncoming storm. They didn't want staff to be stuck and trapped here and not be able to get home. Apologize if there's any wind noise, everybody. Um, but Lawson's was closed. That's a convenience store here. And we did find a convenience store that was open. It was Family Mart. Family Mart is, was open for us. And they had eggs, they had milk, they had supplies. Very little, but they were doing the best the staff was to replenish them with the stuff in the back. Not to just put enough out there so it doesn't make it. Like every, people running for it um, and causing problems. Which is good. They did a really good job of it. Because the line was, was always long in that convenience store because it was the only place open. And I asked the staff when I was leaving the shop, I said, what time are you open till today? Because I know it was only 11 or 11, 11 a.m. And the storm wasn't supposed to make landfall until about 6 p.m. And I said, what time are you open to? I'm sure you're closing around 6. And he said, no. So Family Mart is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, he said. All right. And I'm like, my mouth, my jaws, like, open. Like, what? How can this be? You know, this is crazy. I said, so what, are you going to be able to get home tonight? That's what I asked him. And he said, no. And <laughs> it's like, here's this guy. He's working probably a minimum wage, which is what, like $10 an hour here in Japan. Uh, he's going to, he's dedicated to the job because of his team, the company, the company's motto, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. He is here despite the typhoon to make sure that local residents like myself can get supplies. Um, those who came back from Fukuoka from a trip and didn't, don't have anything in the refrigerator. To me, that really moved me. The dedication, the determination, the omotenashi spirit um, to still keep that store open. And there are risks to that. Things could be very bad. The, the windows could... I mean, there's lots of stuff that could go wrong. But I don't think they were risking... They weren't risking their lives, but they were giving their time. They were giving their time more than they more than they were going above and beyond their duty let's just say for of course they were paid for it and this the convenience store did very good business but i was just really moved by i mean i know some people say you know how dare family mart make their workers work 24 hours a day 365 days a year but on the flip side of it i think that also workers workers and residents feel really see the other side of it that that the employees and the, and the company really cares to stay open at this time. Lawson's was closed, that particular Lawson's, maybe if a convenience store had run out of stuff, they had closed. This one family mart was still open and, and we were able to get our stuff and I was very thankful and I gave, I, I gave the guy, you know,
know, a big thank you and big really low bow to the worker and, and I just could not show enough appreciation for what he was doing and I wanted him to know that he was being appreciated too because we just take for granted sometimes the people who are doing working at a convenience store but if you just ask them a question like are you going to be able to go home tonight you know how are you going to have to work for 24 hours straight and he says yes that really moves me I, I don't feel I, I know that the company it's not a good thing for any company to do, but I also can see his dedication to being there and do, and showing a happy face, or just show, being pleasant about it and doing his job so well. To me, that's how I want to sign off this um, this video. So big thank you to the employees of Family Mart. Not so much to Family Mart's company, but to the workers of Family Mart and the uh, other conveniences that stayed open for us during the storm. Um, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for your hard work and dedication. Really do appreciate it. Um, the, fa the family mart was safe. I checked on it to see if, if he'd gone home this morning, the worker that I talked to, and he did. He was home, and I don't know if he got home safely, but I know that he did leave um, as soon as uh, the morning had come. The dedication of Japanese workers uh, and, and how good and competent they are with their jobs cannot be understated in times of emergency. People are very calm and pulled together and uh, no looting, nothing like this. It wasn't that big, but to me, that moved me and Kanai as well. Last night, um, we were thinking about the other people, right? The other people that were out there still working despite the storm and we were safe in our house. So that's all I have to say about that. I hope every, everybody's well. Um, if you're in Japan, take care. Just be patient with the services. And leave any comments below if you have any questions or you want something, have something that you want to share about typhoons. I really do appreciate sharing down below. Um, thanks, everybody. Be safe wherever you are. I'll see you in the next live stream.